everyone, I hope you're well. I'm envisaging that some of you are all snuggly in soft, cosy dressing gowns with a cup of tea in hand. I hope that I can entertain you and give you a little bit of a boost to your Saturday morning. I'm saying that because lots of you tell me that you watch me on a Saturday morning, which is so lovely. Anyway, um, I've got some newness for you. Um, very excited about this. I'm going to go straight in with this because I mentioned that I had been trialing or tested a new foundation and concealer um, last week. And thank you for your comments about how nice my skin looked. And if you belong to Beauty Pie and you can get Beauty Pie, you are going to be very, very excited. They have launched something that I feel is not available on the market. The formula that they've created in a wonderful lab in Japan um, feels sensational. The product is called Super Luminous Skin Genius. Um, the moment I put this on my skin, I felt the difference. Um, I felt the difference. The moment I put this on my skin, I knew that it was special because it was very different to what I've ever put on my skin before. And that's because obviously of the ingredients inside it. This is a very natural, as it says, luminous, um, skin enhancer, but it is the texture that gives this blur and beautiful bounce to the skin that makes your skin look fabulous. Well, I may as well just get on with it and show you. Just got my SPF on, that went on about 20 minutes ago. Um, I don't actually know the colour of this. I will try, I think because this is a sample one, it actually hasn't got the exact colour in, but um, I will put that in the description box later on. So give it a little bit of a shake first. That's because of the skin properties and the pigments need to be fused together. It comes in a little dropper like this and the colours are all nice and warm, as in they're not sort of too pink, you wouldn't expect anything less. Okay, so let me just go straight in. I'm not gonna use a brush because I'm not wasting this product. And I'll do one side of my face just to show you the difference because it's like a, it's like a creamy silk mousse. Okay, so imagine that. And I'm all about the pleasure. I'm all about the ritual of applying makeup. Let me just show you so you get to see the difference of what the product does to the skin because this isn't gonna give you a full coverage, perfected skin. Um, if you want that vibe, that's not this product, but if you have dry skin, or normal skin, and you want to enhance your skin, you want to have radiant skin, and using a product that kind of like blurs the fine lines in your skin, giving it a smooth surface and a beautiful radiance, but it feels like an incredible, luxurious serum, not even a moisturizer. This is, this is what you need. I mean, I'm really bigging this up, aren't I? And if you do, and you are a Beauty Pie member, then you, and you get this, please feed back to me immediately. Um, if you do want to join Beauty Pit, obviously I've got my code, Caroline B sent me, which you can get 10 pounds off. Um, all the details of the benefits of signing up to Beauty Pie are in the description box. I've talked about it many times before, so I'm not gonna bore the pants off you. And again, apologies, I might actually try and do some research on a similar product. Maybe I'm gonna look for some Japanese products that might emulate this if you, if you aren't able to get Beauty Pie, because I know that's really annoying. Um, so anyone who is fearful of foundation, doesn't like the way that foundation um, looks or makes their skin feel or they just feel that it feels dehydrated. I mean, look at this. Oh, and the sun's come out as well to get even more detail. It just sinks in and looks like I've had a facial, <laughs> basically. I wish I could get the sort of sensory aspect across to you, it feels plumped. It feels like I've had a facial. Let me just look at my notes. So it's got so it's got hyaluronic acid, collagen amino acids, which help the skin barrier. Then they've got um, a tripeptide, which smooths the skin. Uh, it's just made in this amazing lab in Japan. You don't need to know anything else. It's just great. Right, let me get on with the other side. Um, they've also got a concealer too, which will allow, I will apply. And obviously you can apply it exactly how you like. If you've got very oily skin, you're probably not going to enjoy this product. Um, but if you are like me and this is what you want, you are going to enjoy this product. Um, and it just gives a lovely kind of jibby radiance, which, which does also tend to last, because as I was saying last week, it's 
all well and good trying something on and go, oh, that's nice, but then you have to kind of get the wear of it. But um, I've literally not used anything else on my skin since. Okay, so let's just put that in. Also, because it's so soft and blurring on the skin, it's really, really quick to put your makeup on. So with that comes the Super Luminous Serum Concealer, and I'm using the lightest one. Again, if you want to cover anything that um, is really dark um, around your eyes, then this probably isn't for you. But you could always combine it with like a little bit of colour correcting first and then dab over this over the top. Because as you can see, it just gives this beautiful radiance and it's not sheeny shiny, it just looks super, super hydrated. And the concealer has got a um, horse chestnut flower extract, which over time appear improves the appearance of fine lines. So it's got um, an ingredient that's going to benefit the texture of your skin too. So very happy with that. Now what I will say is with any of these kind of blurring, sort of luminizing products that give you this sort of beautiful radiance, I'll just sort of show you further back so you can see it in different lights. You don't want to look all over glossy because then you lose the definition in your face. Not that you just look oily, you just sort of lose that shape in your face. So I'm going to use a little bit of the Merit Stockholm Flush Blush, which again, it looks like you wouldn't really enjoy applying it, but it's really super handy. Um, this is gonna be like a really lovely nudey pink makeup. Um, and I'm just gonna scribble. Scribble, scribble, scribble. And actually, that's obviously quite ridiculous. Um, but because it's very sheer, um, you need to put a little, a lot on, and then it just blends very lightly into the skin. But I want to create just a nice flush. You see how that look? That sort of disappears sort of very quickly into my skin. And I think that a lot of people sort of quite tentative when they put their makeup on and I'm like, oh, come on. Actually, I really feel like I need to, I need to get back with a bunch of brilliant people and watch people apply makeup and, and kind of really get in there. So not me demonstrating, but watching everyone do it. Um, if I get my act together, maybe I'll do, I'll get some people in and watch them do their makeup and kind of crit criticize how they do it, critique how they do it, because that's a great way of learning. So I've got my nice little flush on. This might put a little bit more on. It's very soft, very, very natural. But for me, I wouldn't leave the house like that. I'm gonna take the 107 um, BK Beauty brush. It's lovely and tapered with a bit of the Vive medium modern um, powder perfection. And I'm just gonna take that around my nose in between my brows and on the chin. Now I've chosen um, the Vive one, one because I just love the packaging. I really love this brand. This girl is very, very clever um, because it's got a little bit of pigment in, so it gives me a little bit of coverage. And that around my T-zone area is kind of where I need that sort of, you know, around redness around my nose, etc. But I don't want a full on face, I'm not into that. Just into this like plumped, blurred, yumminess that I've got on my skin. And that's pretty much, that's my powder done. Having that little bit of dew just kind of like softens any fine lines. So that's it, the tapered brush. It's very soft, very nice. Just allows you to get into the nooks and crannies of your face. Just take that off my mole. Lovely, okay. So brows, they're pretty much done. I thought because this is a pinky nudie makeup, I'm going to do a little by Terry. I haven't felt I've used any by Terry for a while. I've got these in my kit. I like the by Terry, the Victoria Beckham and the Hourglass sticks. And as you well know, here you go. Um, so I thought I'd start with um, the frozen quartz, first of all. And I'm gonna take that just on the inside. This is a, just a really nice um, nod to the pink family. And I'm going to take that just sort of, yeah, three quarters along my eye and then go in with the darker one just on the outside 
and just a little bit on top. I just love doing my makeup like this first thing in the morning. Um, like I said about the blush, it is almost a bit of a scribble, isn't it? Um, but these, all the um, cream eyeshadows that I've mentioned don't like dry so much that if your skin is a little bit loose on your lid um, that it kind of sticks together and you end up with your eyes going like that <laughs> which isn't really a good look especially if you try to make yourself look better and you end up looking like that it's just a bit annoying isn't it okay so get a nice soft brush and blend that in and push that up just feathering just feathering that shadow so that you don't get a big lump, a lump of skin, I was going to say, <laughs> a big area of skin that is a little bit lighter, so therefore protrudes forward because anything that is that you highlight or is lighter and brighter um, is pushed forward. So anything you want to push back, you go a bit deeper. But just to kind of, I might even just take a little bit of the brush because that's set in place. Do you see what I mean? I just need to almost get like a very soft effect just to knock back that sort of potential hood effect. Well, it's not potential, it's there, but you know what I mean. Just to kind of open out the eyes a little bit. And that is pretty much all I'm gonna do because that's super quick. Just ask my son not to be noisy and he's just flushed the loo with the door open. I really hope that you didn't have to listen to that. I mean, honestly. Any mothers of boys will know my pain. <laughs> Feel my pain. <laughs> not real pain, but you know what I mean, annoyance. Right, Vast Lash. This is the new mascara from Victoria Beckham. Oof, I can literally I can actually do my weights with this. I bought weights. I bought 5K weights. 5K is heavy. I was really surprised. I think I used to lift 5K like that. That's a bit like, oh, just maybe I'll start with the mascara. The reason I'm saying that is it's because it's really lovely and weighty, I have to say. I'm not really sure about Victoria Beckham's makeup before, but I'm yeah, coming round to it. Very, very nice as a treat product. So this is smudge free and voluminous. I haven't even opened it yet, but I wanted to save it to do it with you guys to see what we've got. The packaging is divine. Okay, so you've got a slightly curved, slightly curved twizzled brush. So we'll put that right to the lashes and see what we get. They say you just need one coat. I think there's only one mascara that does one coat. Most mascaras really do shine with two. I'll definitely have two coats of this. But, you know, for some, maybe they just like that light effect. Okay, interesting texture. So it's not, it's not thick, like uh, Hourglass Caution. It's almost quite runny. Um, I don't mean that negatively. It's a thin mascara. Hmm, and it's very, very soft. Something that I would possibly use for maybe beauty, a beauty shoot. Can't really use anything too thick um, when you're shooting beauty because it just looks too much as a close up. So you just sort of want the lashes to be tinted. So I would use something like um, my Japanese DHC mascara or something like that. But this is, okay, well, let's see. Um, Soft, flattering, and natural. I think it's going to do the nudie look. I'm going to tint, I might tint my lashes actually. But anyway, um, sorry, I'm thinking out loud. <laughs> I think I say that to myself every time I put my mascara on. Oh yeah, I must tint my lashes. Not I must. It'd be helpful to tint my lashes. Anyone got any really, I'll tell you what I ask you this week. Who's got the best tip for the blackest eyelash ink? I really feel that there's a better one that I, than I use. I've done a video on it. I just get it from that, the local professional beauty store. I don't even know the name of it. I could show you the box. Like I could tell you what the box looked like, but I can't remember the name. Lower lashes are coming up nice. Um, 
But yeah, I'd really like a really, really dark ink that actually lasts. Let's see what you guys come up with. But you America's got better ones than we have in the UK. All right, I'm gonna use the tip for that. Smudge-free volumizing mascara, vast lash, okay. It's kind of um glossy. Yeah, so as the mascara is drying, I'm getting a bit more tension through the um, mascara wand, which is then giving that kind of lift. Now it's a little bit wet there, so let me just uh, tidy up those spider footprints. Oh, spider season, aren't they? Everywhere making their webs. It's like <laughs> walking around, <laughs> caught in all the webs. Maybe I should uh, walk around with my glasses on. But yes, it is that time, isn't it? Uh, right, well I'm gonna be very interested how I'm gonna last with this. I'll let you know next week. I'll keep going with this because it is an interesting formula. And with a little bit of help, I'm getting very soft, fluttery lashes, but not as voluminous as I thought. Anyway, it'll be interesting to see what you guys think. Who's bought it? Who's going to buy it? Right, okay, so, um, oh, I'll tell you what I found is a really lovely, because I love the hourglass packaging. This is not hourglass, this is L'Oreal. And, um, sorry, I was just gonna take the label off, because the mean, labels never look so nice, do they, the barcodes? Anyway, just thought these color riche lipsticks, super glamorous. And again, quite weighty, um, which I really like. I wonder whether I should just close these down. One second. Okay, is that a bit better? Can you see the makeup a bit better like that? I think I can see it definitely better in the screen, but anyway, you've got the best of both worlds. So yes, yeah, so back to the L'Oreal lipstick. And I thought, oh, I love that. Um, that's a nice, again, about the touchy feeliness, the glamour, the ritual, the texture of makeup, the enjoyment of makeup. This is really nice. I chose color 173. And um, look at this. It's got this lovely molding on it. And it sort of grabs your lips and uh, helps you apply. But I thought what a beautiful color. This is a classic, it always smells the same L'Oreal lipsticks. I don't, I don't mind that. But it really sort of helps you guide your lipstick on. Uh, which if you are a bit of a wombat when you're putting on your lipstick and you get it everywhere, or you get lipstick shy. <laughs> Again, watching people do it, they go, mmm, that'll do. Like, no, just give your lips just a little bit of a moment. Um, anyway, the, the texture of this is really nice. It's very hydrating. Uh, but because it's hyd sorry, not because it's hydrating, but it's not slippery and moves around, and that's why I really, really liked it. I'm going to use the boldly bare um, Mac lip pencil, which has been a favourite of mine. No, oh, I've started to use my powder puff. <laughs> I don't know why. Anyway, I use this at work all the time. I've got some down there. I've just cleaned them uh, for balance on people's faces. Anyway, here we go. That's actually a really good match. is golden mm -hmm. there we go great so that is a really lovely she says really lovely it's gonna just catch that blush just on the top of my cheek just to lift me a little more so I was kind of going down with my blush for that sort of flushy cheek but I think because it's very gentle I actually need the color 
see the difference? Poof, literally that. I was like, oh yeah, I want my flushy cheeks here, but it's dragging me down. Dragging me down. Lift me up, lift me up. Oh, there we go. Oh, I did a kettlebells. Um, like kettlebell class. <laughs> Blooming egg. That was interesting. I'm not very coordinated. So. <laughs> um, I need to try and get a bit stronger. Uh, so yeah, did that. It wasn't very nice, but I guess it's done, isn't it? Right, okay, so there we go. Adding else to my newness is my darling friend, um, Michael Douglas, and not the actor, one moment, has created or developed his own hairdryer. Now this isn't, this colour blush isn't new. Sorry, this is new, um, but the hairdryer came out last year. I'll get there in the end. Um, I've known Michael for many years, we've worked together. He's a delightful human being. Um, and he's also gadget crazy. He's a very bright man. Um, and he has developed his own hair dryers. Now, he's so gadgety, I, I can't let him down when I talk about this. Okay, so it weighs 354 grams, which is half, I want to take the sticker off, go half of his pro hair dryer, half the weight of his pro hair dryer that he used to use, which they are heavy. It is super light. Oh, and that can go away. Um, it's very quiet and it has a three meter cable, which I love. Lemon hair dryers with short wires. Oh my God, really annoying, perfect. It's also self-cleaning. It's very energy efficient with a very powerful motor, even though it's up 1600 watts, it's more powerful than a 2000 watt and more energy efficient. And it's brilliant, it's so, Cute! I never ever thought that I would say that I love my hairdryer. Hair dryers for me were extremely functional um, and nothing else than that. They weren't a pleasure. And you know I like beauty things that are pleasurable. This is giving me joy. Um, his tips, I'm not gonna spend hours like drying my hair. I'll do a little bit to show you, but you know how to dry your hair. His tips are, okay, so first of all, he would say, um, high setting, really quiet, right? High setting high heat, turn your head upside down and blow your hair out first. And then especially for someone like me, who's got the frizzy bits at the front, that's when you turn the heat down and you use the small, um, what do you call it? So I have two brushes that I love. This is a shimmer and paddle brush. I think you can get them on eBay. I've had it for donkeys years. I absolutely love it. And my YS Park small round brush, which I use just around the front of my hair. I'll show you in quick time. So Michael says, when you want to do the smoothing part, put on the nozzle. And for my hair, which is very sensitive and breaks easily, lower the temperature, but have high speed. So brush this forward, brush this down. Finally, just to do the front bit, I just take it down, blow underneath it, twist it round and then pull it out and then twist the brush as I take it out. Fizzling it, fizzling it. It's also got a cold shot on it as well. Anyway, if you're in the market for a lovely, stylish, economical, energy efficient, super powerful but lightweight hairdryer, look at my mate's hairdryer. You won't regret it. Anyway, thanks very much for joining me this week and I always look forward to reading your comments. See you next week, bye for now.